What's going on everyone? It's Aaron here from GA Fan TV. I'm joined here today by Patrick from GA Zone Podcast. This is the Fan Reaction Show and we are looking at all the big results and all the big talking points from the weekend's football and hurling, discussing all four divisions and of course touching on the hurling action from the All-Ireland Championship down to the Nicky Rackard Cup. Um, yeah, I suppose first of all, Patrick, obviously um, a win for, uh, for Kerry over Donegal. A uh, big win for Kerry in the end. You know, Donegal, you know, certainly looking quite bright at times in the first half, kicking a couple of early scores. But in the end, uh, Kerry were the side who got the victory, a very comfortable win in the end. And yeah, what was your uh, thoughts on the game? Yeah, um, as I said, it wasn't it wasn't the strongest Donegal team we could uh we could have put forward. So definitely um not you know, but certainly, you know, as Donny Goff and it's hopefully, you know, that we have so much strength, you know, and there's a lot of good performers on the pitch, you know, and yeah, look, it was all, it was only going to go one way, you know, um, Kerry obviously with the ambition of going to win the title while Donny Goff, you know, even though it was the B team and they want, they do want to impress the management and stuff in a way, but at the end of the day, you know, they didn't have anything left to play for. Hmm. And I suppose, like, who would have been your uh, man of the match in the game? Because obviously, you know, obviously it's easy to look at some of the Kerry lads, but, you know, there were definitely a lot of good performers on the Donegal point of view as well. Like, Kieran Thompson obviously had a, a very bright game, but who would have been your uh, man of the match? Yeah, yeah, de- definitely Kieran Thompson, you know, kicked over a good, but Jason McGee, you know, he wasn't playing against Tyrone, came on, you know, played played in blinder, you know, and also as midfield partner, my own club man, Keelan McGonagall, also had a brilliant game there and scored a good point there too. And yeah, look, there's um the, those three, I think, are the main men on the team you'd have to look out for. And yeah, he didn't give the full 70 minutes to Steve McMenamin, but you can't be risking a player, one of our main players, you know, for the big game against Tyrone next weekend. So yeah, look, either way, it was a good performance from the lads and I couldn't com- complain about it. Hmm. And I suppose, what kind of positives would you take away from a from a Donegal point of view? Like, obviously, in the end, it was a, a routine victory for Kerry. But would there be any players that did play? Do you think that maybe get in that starting lineup going into the game against Tyrone this weekend? Hmm, it's 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 hard to know. But I think um, Oshin Gallon definitely. You know, he's been coming on and on, off off the bench. You know, and can. You could put him in a half forward or the full forward position, you know. So definitely, if I think Declan Boner might be able to move Ashen Gallon into the team somehow, I think you know if if I had to choose one player that could easily make it onto the team would be Ashen Gallon, you know. And his club McCool's almost beat Gidor in the Donegal Championship, which would have been a shock too. Like, and they definitely, you know, a top player. And yeah, I'd have to choose him. Mm. Yeah, I suppose there were there definitely were a lot of positives from um from Donegal in that game. Anyway, I thought like especially like up until the first water break, they were very much in it. They, you know, Kerry probably took a while to get going until the you know the second quarter of the first half, if you like. And um yeah, like the likes of Kieran Thompson, Kayla McGonagall looks like he's gonna be a serious uh, midfielder for that Donegal team. So definitely like a lot of positives to uh, to look into the Tyrone match at the weekend. Um, I suppose speaking of Tyrone, obviously they had a, a fairly, you know, titanic battle with uh, with Mayo in the end. It was quite the match. Mayo getting relegated for the first time since 1994. So I suppose uh, what's your reaction to that in the end? I suppose a little bit harsh on Mayo when they actually did play quite well in the second half. Yeah, but look, they, they maybe, um, you know, could have got relegated sooner, you know. Maybe there's um questions over their referee giving too much minutes the first January twenty first, fifth, the first game in McCool Park. But look, it was um went right down to to the wire there, and you know Tyrone really played their hearts out. They, you know what, Tyrone were the better team, you know, and that's it's it's as simple as that, you know. It's obviously Mayo have a proud tradition in Division One, but there can only be eight teams in Division One, and Mayo somehow you know couldn't be the six teams that survive and. That's just the way it is, you know. They have a lot of, but look, they're they're gonna come. It's gonna give Division Two might be a blessing in disguise, you know. They have players like Mark Moore and a lot of them, and there's they have a lot of good young players too. And I think you know 
to get this new generation through, I think Division 2 football is going to give them a lot of game time and it's going to help them. You know, a bit like Donegal in 2019, you know, I think a Division 2 really helped players like Patter Morgan and Austin Gallon. I think it's going to do the same for Mayo. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say as well. Like I made I made a video back in um, in January kind of just predicting the um, the National League and I actually did say that Mayo would get relegated and I know there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of Mayo yeah, fans I'm who were yeah, who, who were commenting. Fans. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of people commenting that weren't too happy, but like if you actually listen to what I said, what I was saying is that it would actually benefit them in the long run a bit like Donegal um, and a bit even a bit like Cork now, like you know Cork had a very good Division 3 campaign. They'll probably follow it on with Division 2. Sometimes you do need to take a step back before you can take a step forward. And, um, yeah, with a lot of their under-20 players coming through, it definitely it definitely will help them. Um, like, in terms of that Tyrone team, like, how do you think Donegal will be able to combat the form of Conor McKenna at the moment? And then when you add Peter Hart in there, who looked very bright, and then even Dara Canavan now as well, it's, um, I suppose it's a bit of a different proposition to maybe what we would have thought it would have been, you know, three, four weeks ago. Yeah, look, Tyrone are looking stronger, you know, and, um, you know, when I jump out in my podcast, he said, just don't really read into that game against that league game too much. And, you know, everyone in Donegal and Tyrone basically knows that that game kind of means nothing. You know, it was just for either Donegal or Tyrone to survive a week weekend early. And that was that, you know, but I don't think it really matters. Um, too much any previous words, but look, I'm yeah. As 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 a neutral, I guess you know you're probably quite excited for it, but definitely as a Donny Gall fan, you know I am a bit nervous about what Tyrone are going to put up and who they're kind what kind of performance they are because they are a top team, you know. And yeah, Connor McKenna coming back from Australia, you know, oh, it's like he's never been away, you know. The way mm. he's just he's talking to it like a duck on to water, and yeah, yeah, and. Dark Canavan too into the mix too. He, he looked really bright on Sunday and definitely definitely someone to look out for. And yeah, look, I think it's gonna be one tough game in McCool Park. And you know, we don't have the home advantage doesn't really matter anymore, I guess, because fans can't come, you know. So yeah, I'm it'll be interesting to see what happens and hopefully we can pull it out the bag. Hmm. Yeah, like it definitely will be a, an interesting game. Like I suppose from a neutral point of view, I'm definitely very excited for it. At the same time, I am kind of disappointed that like, the, you know, one team has to lose here. One team is going to go out and that's it. It would have been nice to see maybe, you know, Tyrone on the other side of the draw. How would they have done, you know, get a couple of games just to see them a little bit more. But I suppose at the same time, from a Tyrone point of view, like when they get Cottle McShane back next year, like I did see on, on Twitter, a lot of people were kind of saying that Tyrone are probably going to be all Ireland contenders when they get McShane back. Um, still think they, you know, maybe need to improve a little bit more in the midfield maybe, but where like where would you kind of rank them? Do you think when McShane does come back and they, if McKenna is still around and Dara Canavan's in the team, do you think they will be all Ireland contenders? Um, You know, at the minute, I think, you know, if you had the, put a teams in tiers you know you probably put Dublin on top as the Orange champions but they probably belong in the same category as like Donegal, Kerry and Galway way as the potential ones if to stop Dublin six in a row hope so yeah I think you, you'd put them within the Donegal, Kerry, Galway category I definitely put them there and yeah top team a lot of strong players too hmm. and I suppose uh, moving on to the Monaghan Mead game um, I suppose obviously we, we normally have Dara on here who's a who's a bit like our, our yeah. correspondent in many yeah, ways. Yeah. But um yeah, I suppose you know uh, in the end, you know, Mead getting a point, uh put it up to Monaghan quite well. Definitely a lot of uh talented players coming through Mead at the moment. So like what was your kind of uh what what was your thoughts on that game? Yeah, Jordan Morris over ones, you know, and you've you've Mickey Newman out of the panel, which is very you know, straight change, but they're still performing without Mickey Newman, and it's good. It's good. It's good to see. You know that Mayo ha- um Meath have that depth, and you look at yeah Monaghan. I don't know what happened to Monaghan. Was it was it nerves perhaps? Because you know they had something to play for on paper. They're still a stronger team than Meath, and no, they they Meath pulled it out of the bag and got a draw. You know, it's definitely ambitious for them. You know. And, you know, you'd probably put them now favourites against Kildare if that's the way they can probably perform against Monaghan, who had something to play for. And yeah, it's definitely 
exciting times for me football, especially with the Miners beating Dublin last weekend and the so yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of players coming through. Um yeah, well, it was interesting for Monaghan because like I look at them sometimes and I feel like a lot of people obviously look at Monaghan and they think of them as a one man team with, with Connor McManus and whatnot. But they do have a lot of very talented players in there, like Conor McCarthy lit up the the Monaghan mm-hmm. Senior Football Championship. Darren Hughes, very quality in midfield. Rory Began, but I do think that so far since the the restart, since they've come back, they just haven't quite got the best out of the likes of McCarthy, the likes of Hughes. Um, but what do you think? Do you think Monaghan are maybe a little bit over reliant on Conor McManus a bit? Um, no, 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 no. They don't. Definitely not. You know, I think, you know, one player he failed to mention is McInnesby. Very, very mm. good. You know, has always been a good servant. I know age is starting to get the better of him now, but he's still a top, top player. And there's other players on the team too, too, that needs to be looked out for. And yeah, B- Bagan's one of them, them two. Like, so I definitely think they won't be over a line. Like, let's say, theoretically, if um, Connor McManus wasn't there for the Antrim game, I think, still think they have enough quality to get past Antrim. Mm. And you might look at someone like, you know, the Cavan game. I, I don't know. Like, Cavan are missing some of the main men either. So I'd probably still fancy them if, if they didn't have McManus over Cavan. And, you don't know, D- Downer, Fermanagh. I know the winners of those two are banana skin games. Obviously, they lost to Fermanagh two years ago. But um, definitely not um, that there. But I don't think it would be enough to get over the line against... Donegal her own or even Armagh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose like we, they are, yeah, they definitely aren't, you know, over reliant on McManus, but you would definitely still fancy them to, uh, to get past the likes of Antrim and Cavan, even Cavan definitely um, relying on a lot of young players, it seems, since they don't have the likes of Mackey um, and, and whatnot in the team anymore. Um, but I suppose kind of staying on the topic of uh, Division 1 and talking a little bit about the upcoming um, Connacht Championship. Obviously, I think Galway were everyone's Connacht uh, favourites, you know, before the, you know, the, the football resumed. And obviously, Mayo, even though they lost to Tyrone, still looked very bright. Roscommon, I think, are kind of slipping under the radar in many ways. I think, you know, obviously they were missing yeah. a lot of players yesterday. Um, in that game, and they still managed to, to come away with the win. So, like, who would you still have Galway maybe as favourites for Connacht, or would you would you now maybe be looking at Ross Common or Mayo? No, no, no. I think uh, Ross Common and Mayo good teams, like, and I think, but I do think I still I actually think Ross Common are good enough to get past Mayo in the semi final again. I think they have a lot of good quality and stuff, and so are Galway. But I think with Galway now with Podrick Joyce in there. He's finally, I think he's finally bringing out the best in goal. He's brought in a lot of good young players, you know. But, um, and importantly, the most important thing is he's playing the same style that got Cora Finn so far in the champ- championship, you know. And yeah, I definitely think, you know, he's implementing Cora Finn's style of play. And I think that's going to help them big time. I think that was the big mistake over the last few years was that they were not playing the same way as Cora Finn. And I think now's the year where they need to go on and one Connacht and, yeah, potentially, you know, get Kerry in the semi-final or Cork even. So that'll definitely get people's legs slipping. But, yeah. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, they, they definitely have been bringing through a lot more of the, the Cora Finn players like Ronan Steed coming in. I think he's been a great addition um, in midfield, it will be interesting to see how they play though. Like they were very defensive against Dublin, but you do wonder was did they just do that? You know, just testing things out. It's it's kind of hard to know would it be in a dead rubber. Um, obviously Armagh got uh, promoted. They uh, they beat Clare on the end. Um, how do you reckon they'd actually get on in Division One next year? I mean, I know it's a long way away, but I mean, it'll yeah. be like it. I was kind of looking at it earlier, and it's it. Like they are good enough to stay up in Division One, but at the same time you're looking at it and it's like who like who else drops out? Like it's it's gonna be pretty close up there. Yeah, it's the I, I have question marks. Who are they gonna take points off? Are they gonna take points off Dublin? No. Are they gonna take points off Donegal? Maybe if you talk about players like Murphy and McBurdy, like they've beat us in Dr. McKenna Cup games before, maybe Tyrone, maybe an under strength Tyrone. Um I think you know well, Mayo aren't Mayo aren't there anymore. So Monaghan, hmm. they beat them in the championship. So I think if they're going to take points off anybody, it's going to be Monaghan. 
and Ross Common. Well, Ross Common beat them away up in, in Armagh, but you know, maybe if you've take out maybe the daily the dailies or Enda Smith or Connor Cox or someone, maybe they could give them a good battle. But um um Galway, I think are too strong for them. And Kerry, even if you take out Clifford and Shawnee O'Shea, I still think would be the better team than Armagh. So yeah, it's definitely um you're probably relying on a few understrength teams on their day, maybe to get the points to stay up. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah. I suppose obviously we'll have to we'll have to get through the championship first anyway before we uh, yeah before we, we worry over. about the yeah, January yeah. yeah. Um, and I suppose Cavan getting uh, relegated in the end, very unfortunate for them. Like they were before the start of the game, you know, they were hoping to get promotion, and it was. They needed a lot of things to go against them in order to get to get relegated, and in the end, that happened. It all happened, yeah. Mm. Very, very, very surprised. You know, I was really, I actually thought Kevin were gonna maybe get the promotion ahead of Armagh, but it was just the way it went. You know, um, I thought you know Claire might have at least got a draw against Armagh with their um relegation, but like you know, they have they have their bigger players missing Kevin, and you know it, it really makes it's it's a real head scratcher. Why a team of their talent are as low as Division Three? You know they got to the Ulster final last year. Um, with Davy Graham, um, their manager, he's probably one of the best managers from the GA for the shadow of doubt. You know he's responsible for the, that famous Mullen Acta win in the Leinster Club Championship. So he's definitely um a massive player on the team. And yeah, definitely, I think um it's good to have him around. And yeah, but it's real. I don't know. But I think Ross Common, you know, the fact that, you know, a lot of their younger players went out and performed against Calvin, I think it shows hope for them. And, but I don't know, like, I think it was just a bad day for them. But I definitely think, you know, they're going to eat, they're going to be going straight back up to Division Two. Like, because if you look at some of the teams in Division Three, they're at least two or three times better than them. Mm. Yeah, I suppose it'll be maybe not to the same extent as what Cork done, but definitely. You'd fancy them to go down to Division Three, and and it would be nice for them down there to, to get back to Division Two, um. But I suppose we will have to see kind of how it all it all does pan out. Um. Obviously, down they got uh promoted to Division Two despite the the fee. They did uh you know throw in a lot of second string players, but um I suppose loud though they actually looked quite good. Like a bit of a word on them. Uh, Samuel Roy's looking. You know he's been one of the top players since the since coming back. And yeah, like I, originally I would have had Longford beating loud, but I suppose Longford will have, you know, they didn't play at the weekend. Um, lucky for them, but I suppose, yeah, it'll be interesting, you know, looking ahead to that game now as well. Yeah, well, I think the integrity, I uh, almost like the integrity of the league was nearly destroyed. You know, the way I was speaking to the different dairy fans, you're quite annoyed about um, the situation. And, you know, maybe, you know, okay, probably down a few of their Kilku players, a lot of few stronger, but lads on the team, they might have been able to push past life, but still, it just probably took out the drama. Like, the, Derry going to Offaly, who they would be fair, favourites against, and then, you know, you had down below, and if down managed to get past Louth, then that could have easily been a good one. You know, mm. some kind of a shock, but like, a, I don't know. It would, I think, I think Derry will come back stronger next year. Get, them and Cavan are going straight up, you know, and Rory Gallagher, you know, very nice man. I've interviewed him a few times and yeah, very good person. And I don't know. I think, I think, I think there's, they definitely have potential to go on further in the championship. And yeah. Yeah, no, I yeah, think, we, um, I think with, with Rory Gallagher and in, in the Derry team, they definitely like Derry are definitely, they're, they're a real, they're going to be a tricky team to come up against, I reckon in the, in the championship this year. And yeah, on an unfortunate situation how it how it kind of panned out for them with, with Down getting promoted. Yeah. But um obviously in division four, uh Wicklow and Limerick got promoted. Um I suppose it's massive for them counties, you know. I have a couple mm. of friends from Wicklow and you know, I know they were telling me this is almost like you know, not not to the not like in all Ireland or anything like that, but it's it's huge for Wicklow, obviously, because yeah, you know, for them to get promoted to division three. Um, yeah, I suppose massive for, for both Wicklow and Limerick football. Yeah, look, Davy Burke, you know, he's come on, done the job he was told to do, like, and um, I'm mean, on as one of his first interviews, he's talking about a groundsman telling him they need a magic wand to get up, but look, 
He's he brought out the magic magic wand and they are up. You know, Mark Jackson made a good save for Wicklow and there was a few other key moments in that game against uh, Wexford. You know, who you are quite a strong team even without Paul Galvin as a manager. And you need to look at the likes of um, Lambert too. You know, impressive, impressive team. You know, oh very. They beat um, they in the monster pre- is it the Margaret Cup, which is the monster football preseason tournament. Mm. They won it. They 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 beat Cork, you know, and they mm. definitely. I know it was their full strength team out, like, but playing against um, still winning that there, you know, and I I would fancy them to go and beat Waterford next weekend, and yeah, they have a lot of good footballers and def definitely a team on the up, and yeah, the, delighted for a hurling strong county like them to go and push on, you know, and they've at a time they were actually half decent, so yeah. Mm. Yeah, like a, it's going to be close with Waterford, definitely. Waterford have a couple of good uh, young players as well. Um, but definitely, yeah, Limerick are, would definitely be the favourites going into that, you'd have to say. Um, and I suppose a word on um, Antrim, obviously, big disappointment for them. Like they they were they were in the driving seat before the, the lockdown. You know, they had that, they beat what Limerick by what was it, 16 points or something like that? Might have even yeah. been more. And, you know, they've come back and suffered a hammer into Wicklow. And even though they, they beat Waterford, unfortunately, they uh, they didn't get promoted. Yeah, look, I think it was the main... I think the big sucker punch was that game last weekend against um, Wicklow where they conceded seven goals, you know, and they had two, they had two buses going down to Wicklow. So if I was an answer player, I wouldn't want to be on the bus with, which the manager would be on. But, uh, <laughs> like, you know, um, it was definitely... Um, Good game and luck, you know, it's good. Obviously, a Kismet Park might help Antrim football and hurling to an extent, but um, yeah, look, it's good to see that you know Antrim got a good one over Waterford, or albeit you know outside of their outside of Antrim, but look, good one for them. And but too bad for them, you know. And I say, I say they are strong enough to go up next year, you know. I think um, Leitrim and Life, you know, I don't know if Le- I'd really fancy Leitrim. To go mm. on to back to division three, but I think you know, Louth and Antrim, you know, I think the Northeast are going to have a good performance in division for next season. Mm. Yeah, Leitrim always tend to change their team quite a lot because, yeah, they're you know, such a small county, most of the people in the county leave the county, so it's always an uphill struggle for Leitrim. So I think yeah. it will be, uh, it will be tough for them. Um, I suppose kind of moving on to, to Hurland then, obviously, you know, a massive win in the end for uh, for Limerick. Um, but I suppose how good was that Tony Kelly performance? I mean, 17 points, one of the best individual performances I think I've, I've seen in a long time from a losing team anyway. Yeah. Yeah, look, look, Buff Egan thinks it's one of the best ever Munster championship performances of all time. Like, But um, he scored 17 points in the whole game. And 12 of them came in the first half and Clare had the wind on their side. So they talk about the difference Winter Hurling's going to make. And I think, you know, he really took advantage of Winter Hurling. But I, you know, the likes of Colin Parkinson saying the fact that, you know, it was Limerick v. Um, Kelly, I don't, I, 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 I wouldn't say so. You know, they still had a lot of good players that grew Hegarty and other things. But look, I think that showed how strong Limerick were that they were able to get 36 points on the board, even though, you know, Tony Kelly managed to get um, 17 points. Mm. Yeah, I suppose that with Clare, they just they just need a little bit more from some of the other lads, I think, um, in order to really push for for an All Ireland or push for a Munster title. I think defensively as well, there were just a little bit lapse at times, allowing Limerick in, especially in the second half, they kind of lost their concentration a bit. Um, but where would you rank uh, Tony Kelly in terms of the best hurlers in the country? Would you put him in the top three, top five? Um, Ham, Patrick Horgan, and Seamus Callanan. Now, I don't know who I would put as the top hurler, but I definitely mm. would put them three in the top three. You know, and he's probably Tony Kelly, obviously, in a similar situation to Patrick Horgan, even though he has won in All Ireland, that he might, you know, if he was playing for a different county, he'd probably be in a better chance of winning the All Ireland. But look, whatever, Claire, Claire, you know they're they're better than Leash, and they'd be probably be better than Dublin. So yeah, mm-hmm. I definitely think um, the season isn't over for Claire just yet, and they'll come back stronger on the qualifiers. Mm. Yeah, I suppose I'd probably put 
maybe TJ Reid, Joe Cannon up there definitely as well with the uh, with the likes mm. of the Kellys and even Aaron Galan had a top class mm. performance for for Limerick and he's still a young player as well. So in the next few years he'll definitely even be uh, like up there. Um, but yeah, I suppose obviously you know kind of continuing on the the train Dublin obviously um, got that win over Leash. Um, I suppose it was quite comfortable in the end, but like, what what do you rate their chances now going in against uh, Kilkenny? Oh, Kil- I, I I I think Kilkenny are all Ireland are going to win the All Ireland, but I think it's a step too far. Like I know Donald Burke might put a similar Tommy Kelly performance where it's going to score a lot. You know, it'll be a big statement for Dublin if they could knock out Kilkenny. But um, I, I I definitely still fancy Kilkenny for it, and you know what, but. I don't know, like I think you know that, that one of release was good for you, but maybe if you've got Galway or Wexford, you might get a more winnable team. Like, but woof, ah, it's 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 too far for you, and I think you know, it's, I just don't, I, I just don't see it happening for Dublin. But you know, I can definitely see Donald Burke scoring a lot and use maybe staying in the game for about 50 minutes. But the last 20 minutes, Kilkenny will run with it. You know, you've you've TJ Reading, you know, and Adrian Mullen probably is able, may be able to come off the bench, so definitely not to be mm. ruled out. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be very tough to be Kilkenny, all right. Like the only kind of the only kind of hope I'm thinking is that maybe because it's Kilkenny's first game and that Dublin have had a game and they have a bit of momentum that they might be able to catch Kilkenny early on, build up a big lead, and then I do think though definitely in the last twenty minutes, regardless of whether. Dublin win the game or not I think Kilkenny are just going to give everything in the past 20 minutes and I think that will be where the game is won and lost um, but yeah it's going to be very difficult I'd love to see Dublin do it but it's going to be hard to see how we we stop the likes of TJ Reid and a lot of the other lads on that team you know Joey Holden and whatnot so yeah it's going to be uh, it's going to be a tough one um, I suppose for Leash uh, I mean it's going to be hard to see them win a game in all honesty in the, in the qualifiers I mean yeah you know, I think whoever probably gets them, you know, and that's not to be disrespectful to Leash. I think they've done a tremendous job getting to yeah. getting to where they are now. Like the fact they're in the the All Ireland series when counties like Offaly aren't, for example. Mm. But yeah, it's going to be hard for them to get a win this year. Yeah, it's going to be very hard, you know. And obviously, you know, the likes of Podge Delaney among other players, you know, they're a very talented team, you know. And Brennan probably one of the best hurling coaches in the country at their side, you know, and they're definitely. Um, an ambitious team, but you know the way Tony Kelly played against Limerick and a lot of good clear players performed. I just think you know they're gonna have you know a bit too much for at least you know maybe maybe a five or six point one for Clare, but definitely they're definitely not gonna walk over Leash and Leash are gonna put a good account of themselves. Maybe a bit like um, the time they played. Um, Tipperary last year in the quarterfinals, probably a similar performance, you know, where they're gonna, you know, probably won our hearts, but they, they they're not gonna win the game. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Um, and I suppose kind of uh, you know, just kind of touching on the Joe McDonough Cup. Um, obviously, you know, Carlo the favourites, but I suppose huge win for uh, for Antrim. Oh yeah. Um, I mean it was it was a bit disappointing not to see the the Joe McDonough or the you know Nicky Rackard on the Sunday game last night. So I suppose we'll touch on it a bit, but yeah, big win for Antrim. Mm, absolutely, you know, um, Westmeath. You know, the um, the last two years they've um been in the final of the G- Joe McDonough Cup, and now you have um Antrim, uh, they're going out beating them, you know. But Antrim are obviously coming in with a lot of momentum from that Division Two A triumph over Kerry, and maybe that game over Kerry gave them enough to get over it because I think that experience of playing a match is definitely going to help them and yeah look it's definitely a game to look forward to and in the next round of the Joe McDonough Cup and yeah I think it was good to but look Westmeath will rebuild you know they have a lot of good hurlers you know and I definitely think within the next two or three years they'll definitely be a Liam McCarthy team but where are they surviving Liam McCarthy's an over question but yeah good one mm. for Antrim you know and McManus perhaps one of the best hurlers in the country Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's definitely top class. Um, I suppose it will be interesting with Westmead. I know they got a, I think they got an under twenty or minor win against Kilkenny a few years back, which was uh pretty huge for them. Huge. 
Yeah, so who knows? Like they could definitely, you know, there's no there's no reasons why they can't be what Leash are now, for example. Um, and I suppose the Nicky Rackard Cup. Um, what do you think, Donegal? Are they gonna win it this year? Obviously, Armagh will probably be there in close contention. But uh, what do you reckon? Yeah. Well, it's 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 next weekend that is the big semi final between Donegal and Armagh. That's the big game. Like, but we, you know, goals were very good for us there you know and um we gave Richie Ryan you know who used to actually be in the the Limerick panel and you know he's he's just moved to Donegal there and played a bit with Don Lowe in the club championship came off the bench got a goal and we beat Longford by two points so yeah look um but uh you know and Armad had a good one over Leitrim the Laurie Mayer champions but um, I think um I think Armad will be the stronger team and it hates me to say it like you know they have a much more competitive uh, club championship than Donegal, you know, the likes of Middleton and stuff. And they only lost out slightly to Sligo last year in the Nicky Rackard Cup final. So I think they're definitely ambitious, you know, and Simon, you know, Simon Doherty gets his pockets right, you know, players like McCurry, uh, they they could be unstoppable easily. Hmm. And I suppose lastly then, before we uh, finish up, I suppose if anyone's looking to, to find you or, uh, you know, listen to any of your podcasts or stuff, where they where can they find you? Yeah, I'm on um, Spotify. You can look up uh, GA Zone. We're on different social media sites, you know, um, Zone GA on Twitter, on Facebook and uh, Zone GA on Instagram too. And you can also uh, check it on the website, gazone.com, where I'll upload it, you know, and yeah, we're going to have... Um, another podcast out uh, episode 19 coming out this Wednesday fingers all going well and yeah look there's um another 18 episodes and some a good lot of them feature Aaron so yeah if you just <laughs> want to go and ch- tune into it it's definitely something you can do and yeah so yeah thanks for listening to me right yeah no definitely I'd, uh, I'd recommend anyone definitely to go and uh, check that out um, and even on your Instagram we done a like a live stream yesterday yeah. we were kind of going over the Dublin Galway result and a few other stuff so uh so yeah anyway cheers for your time patrick and um i'm sure i'll have you on again soon yep thank you very much Aaron.